Welcome to the next lecture in magnetic circuit. We were discussing the series on parallel magnetic circuit in the previous class and there we have taken only the main flux and we have not taken any amount of flux which is there is a leakage if there is a leakage in the uh, iron path. So today's topics of discussion will be what is a leakage flux. So any amount of flux which does not flow to the intended path in a magnetic circuit is called the leakage flux. So if you remember in the previous class we have taken a square cross section magnetic circuit and all the flux were passing through this magnetic path. So no amount of flux path passes all the flux were intended in the same path. Now if certain amount of flux goes out of the magnetic circuit and flow through the air then that is known as leakage flux. So we can take this example we have taken a magnetic core and due to the current in the coil a flux will be established in the magnetic core. So the flux that is established in the magnetic core is known as the useful flux or the main flux and the flux which is not intended in the main magnetic circuit but it flows in the air that is known as the leakage flux. Now when some current is passed through the solenoid magnetic flux is produced this we have discussed. Most flux is set up in the magnetic core and passes through the air gap known as useful flux phi u. So we can see that a mostly the flux will be concentrated in the magnetic circuit because the magnetic circuit the relative permeability will be quite high as compared to the air gap. So generally the flux will be present in the core itself. Only a small amount of flux will flow through the air and that is known as the uh, leakage flux otherwise this flux is known as the useful flux. So some flux is just set up around the coil and is not utilized for any work this flux is known as leakage flux. So we will not able to work with any amount of the flux that is known as the leakage flux. So the total flux will be the sum of the leakage flux plus the useful flux that is set up in the core. So useful flux is the one which is being utilized in the core, leakage flux is not utilized and the sum of useful flux and leakage flux will give you the total amount of the flux. One thing more to be noted here is that, that we are going to see a little bit later that when there is some useful flux then some bulging out of the flux is there in the useful flux. That what it is said that we will see later. So one term we need let us know what is a leakage coefficient or leakage factor. Leakage coefficient which is denoted by lambda is basically the total flux phi divided by the useful amount of the flux that is known as the leakage coefficient. Now what is fringing? Fringing is basically that amount of useful flux we set up in the air gap and tends to bulge out outward. So we have seen that if this is the main flux which is a useful flux and it is bulging out with denoted by B and B dash then it is known as the fringing event and it has the magnetic line set up in the same direction and it is repelling each other. Due to the fringing it increases the effective area in the air gap and decreases the magnetic flux density. So fringing is directly proportional to the length of the air gap. So what do the fringing do? It increases the effective area of the air gap and it will decrease the magnetic flux density and fringing will be directly proportional to the length of the air gap. Now uh, we have to see that uh, this fringing and leakage flux in most cases we have to neglect because the reason being is that we will just assume that the magnetic material is good enough to have all the magnetic flux linked in it because we can't measure the fringing effect, we can't measure the leakage flux. So generally when we solve the problem we will neglect the fringing effect, we will neglect the leakage flux. However, this will always be present in the magnetic core. Thank you for now.